Hello. Today we're going to use the filter spectral library tool to take a spectral library that we're going to create from a region of interest and filter this spectral library against another image. <laughs> Meaning we're going to create a spectral library from some particles and then we're going to take all the spectra in that library and filter it against a sample that doesn't have any particles to ensure that our spectral library is pure and that there's no um, let's say rogue spectra in our library that we may have accidentally collected that don't have anything to do with particles. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a sample of some macrophage cells that contain some low density lipoproteins that have some very small two to three nanometer gold associated with them. Um, and we're actually able to visualize these, these particles. We're actually able to detect them um, as they are in these cells or aggregating in these cells. So first I'm going to open up the sample with the particles. And we see here these cells have these orange spots. These are the particles with the gold attached to them. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to create a spectral library, but we're going to create one using a region of interest tool. And we're actually going to draw around these particles and create a small region of interest. And if we happen to collect some spectra outside of the particles, sort of this background spectra that has to do with the cell, once we filter this uh, library with these spectra that aren't necessarily supposed to be in the library against a control cell, it'll automatically remove those because the spectra has commonality uh, or has things in common with the actual um, control cell uh, with no particles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the region of interest tool. So I just right click inside either of the zoom image or the image window. And let me just delete this region of interest that was already there from a previous exercise. So here I'm going to go to polygon, which means I'm just going to kind of freehand draw and I left click and hold down the mouse. I'll kind of draw a little region around here. And as we see here, I have 250 pixel spectra uh, associated with this sort of uh, aggregated area of particles. And so now I'm going to take this region of interest and I'm going to actually convert it to a spectral library. So the way I do this is I go to the Cytoviva Analysis tab and go to Convert Region of Interest to Spectral Library. Um, I highlight the file in which I created the region of interest from, which is the only one I have open here, this Aurora PLC. And then it's asking me to select the region. There's only one region we've created, so I just highlight it. We want to do all pixel spectra. And we can either commit this spectral library to memory and save it later or save it now. So we can just here, I'll just say, ROI. SLF just means spectral library file. Doesn't have to be in the name. I just choose to put it there so I know what it is. And then I hit OK. And immediately this file is created. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this region of interest. Is now I'm going to actually take this spectral library and filter it against the control. So now I'm going to go to open image. And I have the control here. So open the control and you can immediately see that there's no particles or it doesn't seem like there's any particles in this in this sample. We don't see these, these yellow and um, gold kind of areas in the cell. So this is a, the control sample which does not have any particles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this spectral library here, the one we've just created in the region of interest, I'm going to filter it against the control. So we go to Cytoviva Analysis and it's Filter Spectral Library. So I have to select the library to filter, which is the ROI SLF. And then I'm going to filter the data against, we can either do a region of interest, a spectral, another spectral library, or an image. In this case, it, we're going to do image. It uses the spectral angle mapper algorithm to check the commonality 
between the two spectra. Display report upon completion. Yes, it's just going to tell you how many spectral, uh, spectra remained and how many were filtered out. And I will choose to name this new library ROISLF, but filtered. Now I have to select the image in which I'm going to filter the spectral library against, and it's this control. And depending on how many spectra you have in your region of interest, which winds up becoming your spectral library, the filtering process can take anywhere from a few minutes to maybe five, ten minutes if it's a large image you're filtering against or it's a large library. Um, in this case, we don't recommend having a spectral library over 500 spectra um, because it can take quite a long time. I'm using a laptop. This is going to take a little longer, so I'm just going to pause the video while this completes. Okay, <clears throat> so this is done being filtered, and we see here the number of spectra filtered out were 63, and the number remaining were 186. And our new library is shown here, ROISLF filtered. So now what we can do is we can run the spectral angle mapper algorithm on this image with the new filtered library to show where this, where these spectra occur. So we go to spectral mapping methods, spectral angle mapper, and we have to select the file in which we want to search for these spectra in the library on, and it's this Aurora sample here, so we select it, hit OK. Then the end member collection dialog is the dialog that asks what spectra are you searching for, um, and it's in this library, so we're just going to import from spectral library. We select the filtered library. We select all of the items, hit OK, and select all again, and hit apply. And here is the last stage of the spectral angle mapper routine. We leave all of these parameters the same. And here, uh, output rule image, we always want to select no. Uh, this will create an image for every single spectra in the library, which would be many, many images here. Uh, and it's just a black and white image for each spectra in the library to show um, how close of a match in a grayscale fashion it was to the other pixels. And it's, it's not necessary for our application, so we, we check no. And we can um, now choose this classification file either to memory or we can name it. We'll just do it to memory. Uh, and what this spectral angle mapper tool is going to create is basically a classification file, which is an image, which is the same dimension as this image that we're searching for the spectrum in, except it is a binary image, meaning pixels are either black for no matches or they're colored for a match to a spectra in the library. So we hit OK. And so when this is done, we are going to see the classification file is what it's going to create. It's going to show up here in the list. And there it is. This little colored checkered box is the classification file. So I can close this dialog, and now we can actually overlay this class file over this image to show where the matches are. We go to Overlay Class. Uh, it's this Memory 5 file here. We hit OK. And so now what we're going to see is we can turn these on one at a time, or the easiest thing to do is to just right-click any of these colored squares, and all of them will turn on. And then the unclassified, we can just turn off. And so now we see there's a color for every spectra in the library. A really easy way to visualize this, though, is to merge all of these to be one color. So you go to Options, Merge Classes, and we have a base class. So if we select the first one, which is red, which I find to be the easiest to see, 
and then we go down here to all of the other spectra to merge into this one so we go to the next one in the list and then we hold down shift on the keyboard and we scroll all the way down to the bottom and select the bottom one so now all of these are going to merge into this one and when we do that we see they all turn red and now we can simply turn them all off and on And so now we have a library that we're confident is only associated with these particles and not with other parts of the cell that don't have particles. And if we look at this, we can see through the zoom window here, not every particle got classified. We could create a, a bigger library, of course, by manually selecting um, pixels in these particles. But this is just a quick way to sort of create a library from a region of interest and filter it against the control and then use that library to classify other particles in not only this sample but in other samples as well. Thank you.